So, um, last time we looked at your Michael Scarborough, we looked when she made grips on the belt, and then he was trying to bring his knee in and all that stuff. And we showed you the weaknesses in that grip. Probably the most common one will be um, one arm forward, one arm back. So he's going to make two lapels. And then his other hand is going to grab the belt and the pants and the other up his elbow on the inside. This one, perfect. So now he's stiffed arm. Okay, so obviously now when he try to break his posture, this big arm is in the way. So we need to break this grip to start with. And that's going to lead us down two different pathways when we eventually get there. So the first thing is I get the cross grip with my right hand. Left comes underneath. If he's tight, sometimes you get people that are tight there. Usually if they're tight from there, I can just do that. Very similar to just grab two ba the belts and your elbows in. Yeah, it takes him down. If he does make the, the, I think years ago I was actually teaching this, you know, you're controlling the hip, or, uh, someone showed it to me, but then that'll work him down. So a stiff arm is better with his elbow to the outside. Perfect. So now we need to break this grip. So I make the cross grip, okay. Left comes underneath, find my own wrist. And now from there I want to rotate my wrist so I've got the sharp part going into the sharp part of Shea's wrist. Now I'm not pulling with the cross grip. Right? I pull with my knees and now from this position my the sharp bit of my wrist just pushes into the grip. So I'm actually taking it above my head. Too many people from this position are pushing and they're trying to actually push the grip back this way to break it off. You will probably break it, but you're using a lot more energy and this is more efficient. So once I make that cross grip, I don't have the, the, the wide part of my wrist on his wrist. I rotate it up so the sharp bit, the thin part of my wrist is on his wrist. And now from that position, I pull with my legs to put pressure into this grip. And now from there, I just pull my left wrist over. Now from this position, if I don't do anything and I'm trying to work, um, you know, arm drags and stuff, Shea's just going to latch on to this again on the way past, and now you have to do it all again. So the detail is, make the grip again now, bro. Perfect. So we're here, pull the legs, strip that. The minute I have his arm up here, I control the wrist, and I bring my forearm to the, to the outside. So anything I do from now on, my arms between his and my gi, so he's not re-grabbing. So from here, obviously, I can pull with my knees, and we're straight into that arm across the body position, or the side scissor position, and we're covering, we'll be covering all the things you can do from there. Let's get that again, so he's made his grip. I make the cross grip. If I feel his elbows low, I'm just back into the last move, and then I can start to get my grips again, either collar and sleeve, Two hands on the collar, okay. Um, but two players will keep this straight, elbow to the side. So I make the cross grip, hand comes underneath, find my own wrist, turn so the sharp bit of my wrist, the thin part of my wrist is into his wrist, pull with the legs, and then I just push that above my head. So the first option is control the wrist, bring my arm to the inside so we can't re-grab and then I can just redirect this arm as I, I, I don't plant my foot on the mat to shrimp because now if I open my guard, she has a free hand, he can push my leg down and step over, yeah, the back of step. So once I get to there to get angled, see the way I'm flat on my back, I open my legs, I want to get onto my right side, I use the connection of my legs and she has hips to shrimp. And then I make that cross grip and now we're back into it again. That's the first pathway. The second pathway, when he makes his grips, I find this. I come underneath, I pull, engage my hips, sharp it in, putting it above my head. Okay, the other thing I can do is, if I'm not going for this movement, I don't need this arm on the uh, outside. From here, I pull this above my head, all right? And now my left hand comes to the inside. I just bring that across, and then I put the wizard on, and I'm gonna find this grip. Let's just get another angle on that. So from our position, this is probably the most common posture control people will make inside your close guard. So I'm gonna make the cross grip. I come underneath, I find my own wrist. From there, I rotate my wrist up. And I'm not really doing anything with the cross grip. I pull on my knees, and then I just push that above my head. 
If I'm going for the overhook, I don't need to get outside control. I just bring this above my head, and now as I pull, I'm still pulling with my knees because I want an active go an active guard. My legs just aren't crossed. I'm continually pulling with my legs. So as I bring this above my head, my left comes around, comes underneath. I find the lapel, and now I've made my cross grip, and I've had control, and now we're starting to play that position again. So, we have two pathways from there, um, but your cross grip break off will be the one that you're going to be doing most of the time. It will break his posture, and think about having an active guard, continually pulling with your legs.